showtime! The Capital G Show starts right now. What's up YouTube, Capital G here. So we're talking Sir Teller Knights in this video and we're asking the crazy question, are they the best deck in the game? And I'm talking right here, right now, as you watch this video, not talking about when uh, the Secret Forces come out or the Hero Structure deck or any of that. And you know what? The premise of this question is honestly, it, it's crazy to even ask it because if you would have asked this question two months ago, I mean, to me, I would have just fell out of my chair laughing and then I probably would have thanked you for making me laugh uncontrollably so much because, I, you know, we all need to laugh more in life. But so Teller Knights at that point, you know, last format, they were kind of like the Cincinnati Bengals. You know, they could make the playoffs every single year, but they were never a real threat to win any major event. You know, if you look at all the major events from last format at pretty much any uh, YCS, ARG, there was always a S night player in like top eight or top 16, but the deck never really got past that. You know what I mean? Because it didn't have the power to consistently run the gauntlet against the other three decks. And you look at post secrets of eternity and it's crazy. It, it seems like one card has pretty much completely changed the fate of the deck. You know, I, I've said in the past, um, I honestly think that uh, Sir Teller Knights have surpassed Shot Alls, and I think that matchup has completely, basically changed just because of Diamond. You know, it used to be that Sir Teller Knights being a deck that wants to exceed, you know, multiple times in the duel, and it's an XC based deck because of Altier and whatnot. That kind of played into the hands of Shadows, and unfortunately, Zertella Knights never had a direct answer to that. I mean, it, it would just it just kind of sucked. Like what you wanted to do played into the hands of Shadows, and not anymore. I mean, now you can pretty much afford to drop Trevor, try and take a card out of their hand. We've already established if you hit Dragon, you don't care because there's nothing on the board. If you hit Falco, you don't really care either. If you hit Squamata, like you can pretty much go after their hand and then go into Constellar Diamond and you just pretty much win off of that card you know shut all players they can set monsters they won't do anything because you can activate it in the damage step they can't use mathematicians effect so you know kind of uh stops them from being able to uh, thin their deck down to get to their bls's and their their key cards like that they can't sack you out with uh cards like dark arm dragon and they can't use fusion from the hand and they can't or excuse me they can't use fusion and throw a whole bunch of stuff from their deck and play the card for free and that's really the big thing and i also think that it really helped with the burning abyss matchup i used to think that that matchup was like evil swarm versus burning abyss practically unwinnable and diamond has completely changed that too what's uh insane is i didn't realize that diamond wasn't once per turn so you know I, i've seen there'll be times where a player will have diamond on board and the uh the burning abyss player just they'll have a whole hand of monsters but they can't do anything you know what i mean do you summon your tour guide out there knowing that that's gonna die or do you uh you know just frivolously try and special summon from your hand because keep in mind uh diamond is not once per turn so if you want to basically try and bait out the diamond you'll have to throw three monsters at your opponent you have to use three special summons and i don't know if anybody wants to do that because them things ain't gonna trigger you've already used the effect trying to special summon uh special summon it now the thing about sutelonates is and i think this is one of their biggest edges and why the deck is so good right now is it is really, really difficult for decks like um, Neclops and Shadows and Burning Abyss to floodgate them, but they can get floodgated fairly easy. Now, Cleese, let's be real. Cleese can floodgate pretty much any deck because Skill Drain and Vanities are just those fucking cards. But just in general, it's like, you know, it's it's almost as if Light Imprisoning Mirror isn't a card anymore because I cannot tell you the last time I actually saw somebody play Light Imprisoning Mirror. I mean, it, it seems like it's been ages and when I put two and two together, I was like, why does nobody play Light Imprisoning Mirror? If you look at Shadows, well, half the fucking deck is light. So do you really want to turn off your Wyvern and your Phalus and your Construct and your BLS? Probably not. That's a lot of your deck. And if you're playing that in Burning Abyss, do you want to do you want to turn off Dante? Do you want to turn off the fucking heart and soul of the deck? Like, I don't think so. So uh, those decks are kind of in a peculiar situation where they have to rely on either spell and trap removal to try and get rid of the floodgates of Shadow Mirror and Soul Drain that they're going to see. Or they have to rely on hand traps, things like Max C and Flying C that while can be effective against their Teller Knights, um, they don't actually get rid of monsters. They don't actually stop their effects. And uh, 
more importantly, a lot of times they'll only last for a turn or two, you know, where floodgate cards can just stop you for the entire game. So I look at Sertello Knights and I'm like, everything is kind of coinciding and the 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 release of diamond has been so much of a boost in those particular matchups that i think that Sertellers have kind of jumped to the top of the pack now i'm not gonna lie i don't know about niklovs in that matchup i would think that it wouldn't be that great but the thing is um you know Sertellers can easily just migrate a card like Phoenix Chain into the main deck as a staple. And in theory, that card seems like it would be fantastic against um, uh, against uh, Niklaus because, you know, basically you can stop the Manju Sanju or you can, you know, stop any um, Trish action. And then it sits on the field even if the monster leaves. So then you can basically just be like, all right, well, I'm going to Trevor it back to my hand. And some players play it now, but, you know, just in general, it could become a staple and that's even better for the deck. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, my good friend, Trevor. I think you guys know I, I'm just the biggest fan of that card ever. I, I think maybe I've seen one player lose after summoning Trevor. But it seems to me that s Knight players are basically turning this into a Trevor deck. Because they're starting to realize, you know, we're maxing out on uh, Call of the Haunted and Oasis Dragon Soul card. Because Trevor is just, it is one of the biggest power plays in the game. Not only do you get to spin things back to your hand, you know, so that you can reuse um, Altiers and uh, Dragon Souls and Call of the Haunted and Phoenix Chains, but then just being able to get rid of an opponent's card in their hand and basically forcing them to set all their monsters on the field and having the option to go into Diamond against those dark decks, like... It's way too powerful of a play, especially considering they can do it turn after turn after turn. You know what I mean? It seems like one of those plays where you do it once and it's enough to pretty much cripple an opponent. So let me know what you guys think. Anyways, thank you guys for watching as always. Subscribing makes life happy.